This is Dr. David Johnson in uh, Cellular and Molecular Medicine at Quillen College of Medicine. And this little video is a step-by-step uh, -step of how to do molecular modeling of hemoglobin and to look at the hemoglobin structure and better understand it. And I titled it The Molecular Anatomy of Human Hemoglobin because it's uh, looking at molecules much like you looked at the body in your human body course uh, as when you started medical school. So we're going to, uh, our learning objectives for this are to become familiar with the structure of hemoglobin, gain experience with molecular models, so you're, you, know, you can play with them and look at them because there are the, uh, the mo at the molecular level, that's where the drugs you'll be giving your patients interact. They re interact with those molecules, uh, not with, uh, you know, just some sort of skin cell or something better appreciate how gen genetic diversity results in protein structure diversity. And I have also have an older version of this on YouTube, and I will have a link in this handout, and you'll have this handout on your D2L site, and uh, it will link to the video in our, uh, on, our, on my video webpage. Now, we're going to use a program called Chimera. And Chimera is a free molecular modeling software package created at the, at the University of California, San Francisco. And it, uh, the reason we're using it is twofold. One, it works very well. And two, it runs on both PCs and Macs. So those of, those of you that like Macs can use it, and those of you that like PCs can use it. Uh, it um, has a, a very nice function when it pulls up the molecule. You can see it also, it goes out and gets the what we call the PDB files. And those PDB files are um, the um, star coordinates for where the atoms in a 3D structure are located. Then the software connects those into bonds so that you can see the actual uh, structures of the amino acids or the structures of the compounds like heme or even DNA and RNA and various other things. So it's a really neat program. And so we're going to uh, control and uh, click on this and this will take us to the uh, website for Chimera and so you can see what they uh, talk about. They talk about uh, here's RNAs and uh, and here's a uh, special background, special different things they talk about. So you can learn a lot of things on this. They have gallery samples and pictures. We're going to go to the download page and at the download page you can see there are various versions of Chimera that you can download. And I will pick, since I have a 64-bit PC that's running Windows 7, I'll pick this one here and uh, that will uh, should um, it'll ask me to, shortly to um, okay now this is the uh, the uh, description of uh, the license agreement and it's free to academics so all I have to do is say accept and then I'm going to I would run and save this if, if I wanted to I'd, or save it to a particular place or run it and uh, I'll cancel this because I already have it installed on my computer so but uh, the next thing we will do is uh, start uh, Chimera once it's loaded on. It takes a little while to compile, but it will do a nice job. And we're going to, I'm going to go out to my desktop, and I still have, I have Chimera 1.8. This is the newest version, just came out in uh, June of 2013. Uh, and I'm going to, it has a neat function called fetch. And you can fetch the structure by ID. And the uh, default is to go to the protein data bank. It also accepts structures from other data, other uh, places, such as European Uniprot. But um, we use the protein data bank, which is hosted at Rutgers University, and it has uh, probably it's the oldest and most extensive uh, selection possible. Now, for deoxyhemoglobin, there is a structure out there, and it is designated by the number 2, HH, and D. So 2, H, H, and D, once you put that in and then hit fetch, you'll see the molecule pop up on the screen. Isn't that fi fast and easy? No trouble at all. I didn't even have to go to the Protein Data Bank website to, and search for it. Now you'll notice that as I mouse over this, you can see that this is lighting up alanine 82 and C. So that's alanine residue 82 counting from the amino terminus and the C subunit. 
Now you can't tell that there are any differences in the subunits here, but if I go to presets and go to interactive ribbons, then they automatically change to various colors. And the, uh, the color notations are the beta chains are in red and in uh, in, the, in this chartreuse sort of color. The alpha chains are in the, uh, well actually this is more chartreuse and this is sort of pale blue. Uh, the, sh the yellow green and the uh, blue are the alpha chains. So that's alanine 5 of A and then this is asparagine 68 of C. So A and C are alpha chains. D and B are the beta chains. So this is the beta chains. These are the two beta chains here. So. Now, if you hold down the left mouse and move your mouse, you can see you can move the molecule on the screen around. And, and one of the nice things about it, it looks really 3D when you do that because it's got a lot of depth to it. So it's in that nice. So, uh, and you can, if you take, if you take your thumb uh, finger off the left mouse button and put it on the thumb wheel, you can zoom in and zoom out. So we're zoomed in right now, and then I'm going to hold down the mouse and drag this down here so we can look at the heme. So here's the heme uh, plane. It's sort of basically a planar molecule, except when iron's bound to it and it's in the deoxy state. When it's in that state, it has a slight pucker to it. You can see that there's a slight bend because the iron sits more on this side. And that's due to the proximal histidine here. This is the histidine the, called the proximal histidine. You see it's forming a bond to that iron and uh, coordinating it, just like the nitrogens in the ring. There's four nitrogens in the the Porter Porphyrin 9 ring that will also coordinate with that iron and they interact with it in a very nice to hold it in place and so that other histidine is the fifth coordination site and goes there. Now oxygen binds in this space here. You see this nice open cavity here. So that's where oxygen binds. And this is the distal histidine down here at the bottom. And that distal histidine is very important because it, keep, it helps to protect us from carbon monoxide poisoning. And it also helps to bind oxygen just a little bit better. And you'll notice that here are two carboxyl groups. This is the carboxyl groups on the heme, and those are sticking to the outside. The little red balls that you see in your picture are actually water molecules. They don't have the hydrogens added, which would add white and make them slightly, you see the bend in them if you wanted to. But uh, so to keep some things a little simple, instead of having hydrogens on these rings here, we don't uh, just, we don't fill them in, all right? So it's uh, sort of nice and seed. And so we, we can um, I'm pull this over and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see the heme sitting out here to the outside of the molecule. So you see that carboxyl group on the heme and this is the other carboxyl group sticking to the outside. And then the, uh, the, the, the the ring of the porter porphyrin 9 sits on the inside and therefore it is very um, hydro is a hydrophobic pocket and you can see that hydrophobic pocket on this heme right here uh, so you can see that phenylalanine and this is a leucine and this is a valine uh, and that helps to hold that in this uh, environment. So having a hydrophobic pocket interacts with the hydrophobicity of the uh, basic Porter Porphyrin 9 ring, but then the carboxyl groups stick to the outside, and you would want the heme close to the outside so that oxygen could get into it, right? So the oxygen can diffuse in and get bound to the, bind to the iron. So now we're going to roll back out and get it sort of normal size again. And we're going to uh, select our molecules that we would like to uh, select. And we're going to twist it around, sort of get it like we should. And we're go oh, I t one of the things we're going to do is go to surface, and we're going to show the surface. And so we're going to look at the surface of the molecule. And so you can see that actually in space filling, this is called a space filling view. You can see the hemes here and here and you can also see how there's actually no space in between. Uh, it looks very open in the ribbon structure but in actuality it's a very 
totally filled uh, space uh, molecule and you can see that there is a cavity in the middle and that is where the uh, bisphosphoglycerate binds and you'll as you, where you're learning when you study about hemoglobin uh, binding in this cavity primarily between the two beta chains uh, stabilizes the deoxy form and so in the deoxy form we have a nice big cavity there so you can uh, really neat isn't it how this structure comes together and you can twist it around this way and look from the other side if you want but uh, so okay now let's also go to actions and surface and go to uh, to um, surface and let's go atoms and bonds and uh, oh sorry color that's color by element so we're going to color by element and when you color by element it colors the uh, uh, oxygens red and those are on the carboxyl groups on the side chains of amino acids like aspartic acid glutamic acid and also charge and uh, covers the oxygens on glutamine asparagine side chains of those then it cover colors the nitrogens blue and those are on the side chains of lysines and all the uh, the amino uh, peptide bonds are are in are those amino groups will be in blue as well and then and uh, of course the amides of asparagine, glutamine, and arginine, those nitrogens are all be blue. So you can see we get a right, rather nice mixture of blue and red. And then you see the carbons are all in gray. So the carbons that hold all this together are in gray. And so you can see a very hydrophobic sort of carbon area in here. And that's why the heme sticks in this area. And the the carboxyl groups of that stick to the outside and that I didn't those are not were not chosen to color so okay now you can go to actions and surface and go to transparency and go say 50% transparency and you can see the ribbons in the background behind each subunit so they're slightly different colored subunits and you can see those ribbons and you can change this transparency to uh, different levels if you'd like you can go to you know 80 percent transparency and that really shows you the ribbons back there all right now we're going to go back to uh, surface and we're going to hide the surface and now we're going to go to tools and go to general commands we're going to put in a command line and the command line pops up very down at the bottom of the screen and it says command and the command I have is already typed in but it has to be typed in exactly like this it's I'm going to select so the command is select colon six dot period B comma six period D and what that's telling the, the software to do is to select amino acid 6 of the beta chain, B, so, and select the amino acid 6 of the beta chain, D. So we're going to select both of those residue 6. Now, as you recall, sickle cell anemia, in sickle cell anemia, the number 6 amino acid, which is glutamic acid, is mutated to valine. And so we're going to look at the position of where that mutation occurs by lighting up that uh, glutamic acid number 6. And so we'll do that by going to now just hit enter. And when you hit enter, you can see it lit up right there. It's got a little yellow around around that right there all right so you can see it and I'll pull it down where you might see it a little better it's also lit up one over here you can see you you may not be able to see it but I can on my screen I can see it right in here and now I'm going to go to actions atoms and bonds I'm going to go to uh, show and now they're there and now I'm going to go to uh, atoms and bonds and ask for spheres and there are the spheres. So now you can easily see those two positions and you see these glutamic acids on here. So now you've done your uh, homework essentially. This is uh, the picture you want to submit to your Dropbox and I'm going to uh, you can just go in and save uh, save image and if you click on save image you can uh, give it a name here 
and I've chosen to to give mine uh, the uh, say D Johnson HBS uh, glue veil beta. All right, and I've selected P N dot png and png is the best file name to save and it's a nice picture file uh to save under and now you can just hit save and it's going to put it on my uh out on my uh desktop i see where the folder is you can select various places to put it but i've selected my desktop that's a nice easy place for me to find it and then uh i can then use it and save it so i'm going to save that and i'm going to overwrite the one i have out there just for the heck of it so uh there it is there's your homework assignment and now we're going into we're going to cl close this down we're going to go back into the um we're going to go to uh d2 our d2l site and uh as soon as that comes up I type in a password which it kept me to the D2L my D2L site now I'm um, because I I'm involved in lots of courses I have a lot of stuff and so I'm going to go to my uh, my old one back here in um, cellular molecular medicine and then I'm going you'll see there's a drop box and so this is last year's course but you'll have one that looks very similar to this I'm going to go to the drop box and here is the hemoglobin modeling chimera homework click on that and there'll be a uh, prompt to deposit your uh, figure and so you just give it a name and deposit it and you will pick the one you did and so here's for example is how my the picture of mine looks uh, in in my image so uh, same thing you just deposit this and however you want to open this up you can open it up in Microsoft various picture uh, viewing software will let you do that so uh, that's not a big deal all right so now you've learned a lot about hemoglobin uh, it's a wonderful uh, molecule. It, it, without it, we would not have not be able to live because it takes all the uh, binds oxygen in our lungs, takes it out to our tissues to keep keep them alive, and allows us to do metabolic work and all sorts of great stuff. Uh, so I hope you now uh, appreciate this a little more and enjoy it. I uh, hope you've learned a little bit something, and I'll uh, see you in class. Bye bye.